Welcome to Storing Data on the File System. In this section we'll learn about reading, writing and appending to files, and we'll contrast lazy and strict I.O., handling other string types including byte string and text, using the ASIN and YAML packages to serialize YAML, and then we'll finish off our serializer by handling custom data types. Welcome to File I.O. and Laziness. In this video, we'll take a quick review of reading from and writing to files, We'll learn to append to existing files, and we'll look at lazy versus strict I.O. Let's start by opening a command prompt in our to-do app directory, and we'll start ghci. We've already encountered the read file and write file functions, and we'll use write file to create a file. And then we'll use read file to read it back again. We'll also append using append file. This will put a new line on the end of the file. That'll add another string. And you can read it back. What is not immediately obvious from these examples is that the file in question is being read lazily by the refile function. That is to say it's only read as the various values derived from it are forced. So let's take a look at that. We'll use the take from operator. This will bind the variable s to the result of read file in the IO context. We're now in the IO context and the string s has not yet been read from the file. And with the help of tools like lsof on Linux and Mac OS, or the handle64 or handle command from sysinternals on Windows, we can see that ghci has a handle open on the file. So we'll use the command handle64, since this is Windows, you could use lsof on Linux or Mac OS. Process name is ghc. And the file is file.txt. And this will tell us that this process, ghc.exe, has a handle open to the file, file.txt. Let's look at the type of s. And we can see this is a string, not an IO string, since we are using a yield from operator, which we commonly use with do syntax. We can use sprint to look at the state of the thunk of s. And we can see here that it is not yet forced. And you'll remember from previous videos in the series of courses that the sprint command will report the state of the thunk without forcing its evaluation. And so at this point, read files opened the file handle or descriptor corresponding to file.txt, but has not yet read any characters from it. So let's grab some characters. We'll use take 5s. This is to grab the first five characters of the string s, yielding the string hello. This will advance the file pointer by some number of characters. Crucially, however, the file handle will still be open. We see that file.txt is still open. In fact, the file will remain open until it is fully read. And to read the file in its entirety, we can force evaluation of the whole of S. Before we do that, let's check the state of S. The first point of interest here is S contains characters beyond the five pulled using the take five expression. It contains hello world and goodbye and the new line. For larger files whose size exceed that of the buffer, we would not see the full file contents here until the entire file was forced. You see here an underscore indicating the tail of the list of characters, also indicating an unforced thunk. So the file handle is still open. And until that's forced, it will stay open. Let's force it. S. Hello world goodbye. And we'll S print it again. We have the full string and no unforced thunks. This is an example of lazy I.O. when the file is read on demand. And we can compare this with a strict version of read file. This is in the strict package. I've already added the strict package to our cabal file. We'll import system.io strict and we use qualified imports import it with the alias s. And now we can take strings from the file using read file in the s namespace. Type, and we can use sprint to look at the thunk again, and we can see it's been forced. Furthermore, our handle command tells us that there is no matching handle. So file.txt has been opened and closed, and the string has been read in its entirety. For simple applications such as our to-do list, the choice of lazy versus strict I.O. will not make much difference for two main reasons. We only typically open one file per invocation of our program, and the program will not keep the file open for very long. 
However, for more complex systems, the difference in behavior might be significant for several reasons, not least of which are laziness makes it difficult to predict when a file handle will be closed, and this can lead to a program exhausting upper limits and open file handles very easily. This can happen particularly when the program processes multiple files in parallel. Laziness might mean that the file handle is never closed during the lifetime of the process and only closed when the program terminates. So in general, experienced Haskell developers will prefer strict over lazy I.O. for these reasons and others. And even for our simple program, we will do the same. And this is both because it's a habit worth learning and because the serialization packages we're going to use will require it.